How's it going guys? Pamper Films here and today we're going to be reacting to Season 3, Episode 6 of The Mandalorian. This episode is titled Guns for Hire. Now last episode we got the return of a very beloved character in the Star Wars universe, Zeb. Who of course is from Star Wars Rebels and let's be honest, he looked magnificent in live action. And of course we got Steve Blum reprising his role as Zeb with the voice acting. And the reason we saw Zeb in the first place was because Navarro was attacked by the pirates from episode 1 and Grief contacted the New Republic. And basically the person who picked up the message was Carson, which is like the pilot that we've been seeing throughout like season 1 and 2 of Mandalorian. He's always with like Dave Filoni's character, which speaking of Dave Filoni, he was actually in the episode 2 along with uh, Deborah Chow I think and uh, Vic, I don't know what his last name is, but he's directed a few episodes of Mandalorian. And then Carson went to Coruscant to talk to the higher-ups in the New Republic, but he was basically told that the New Republic can't help Navarro. So, he went to go find the Mandalorians by tracking R5, because he worked with R5 in the Rebellion. And when he found the Mandalorians, he gave them the rundown about what's going on on Navarro, and off they went after a cool speed from Paz Vizsla. And then the Mandalorians basically saved Navarro from the pirates. They killed the pirate king, he went down with his ship. One of the pirates did get away though, I think his name was Zane, who was in episode one by the bar. So he'll probably be back later this season or maybe next season, who knows. And then at the end of the episode, we got an interesting scene with the armorer and bo where the armorer basically told bo to remove a helmet and told her that she walks both worlds in a way, which basically means that she needs to unite the Mandalorians. So she was given that mission, and now I assume Bo-Katan is gonna go do that? Potentially with Din? I don't know. But Din also kind of give like Paz Vizsla the, like the nod, like, yeah, this seems fine, this is the way. But then right at the end of the episode, we learn that Moff Gideon escaped. Because originally he was gonna go to trial, he didn't, and now he's free. But the interesting part about it is there was Beskar Alloy, I think it was, on like parts of the ship. Carson thinks that the Mandalorians are involved. But we do know Moff Gideon has some kind of history with the Mandalorians because he had the Darksaber and he knows a lot about Mandalore too, I think. And he might be the reason Mandalore was bombed in the first place? I don't know. Also, to point out, there's still them TIE Interceptors and TIE Bombers in the Mandalorian system. So, we'll have to see what's going on there. Is that connected to Moff Gideon too? Maybe. But yeah, I mean, that about sums it all up. So let's stop delaying around with this shitty intro and get right into the fucking episode. Season 2? It must be one in battle. Huh. Is this previously kind of showing that she did earn the Darksaber? Because Din lost that battle against that droid? Battle. That was a long intro. I can never remember like the name of the species. I can remember the Mon Calamari, but not <laughs> these guys. You feeding him? Oh! Wait, that's... A different kind of imperial ship. I am not a criminal. Of course not. I intended no disrespect. I meant to say that we were not aware of the majestic imperial presence in this sector. And majestic. We Wait. We are not imperial either. We are Mandalorian. And sadly, you're too late to hire us. This is an act of war. Is that just me or is that weird timing? I was literally predicting that they freed Moff Gideon and suddenly they're in the show now. Like what? Sconded with her son. It's a lie. We finally have peace with the Calamari. Why would I jeopardize peace and prosperity? We love each other. Sorry. What the fuck? We've got a contract waiting for us on Blizzard 15. He kind of looks like Django. You know what I mean? And maybe it's the armor, but he does kind of look like Django. Hey, what are them tentacles doing, dude? Friends. I thought Mandalorians were honourable. We are, kid. All it takes is a few credits. So is Bo-Katan going on her own? 
to find other Mandalorians. Well, nope, never mind. She's with. There yeah. they are. Wait, so is that Imperial ship that they've got? That's Moff Gideon's, right? This planet isn't on the New Republic registry, so I'd guess it's an independent world that hired them for protection. What the fuck? Welcome. Engaging automated guidance. Oh, never mind then. I guess we're going for a ride. <laughs> so it's a goal to bring back uh, the Mandalorians? I assume so. Oh god, what is this? This is interesting. Why do they have Imperial droids on an independent world? Mm. It's the outer rim. I mean, what else are they going to be used for? The Empire's been defeated. Other than Moff Gideon and potentially Thrawn. Din Djarin and Bo-Katan Kryze. Your presence has been requested by the leadership of the planetary democracy. I'm afraid we have more pressing matters. This is not a request. Uh, oh, Jesus. Of course Grogu enjoys us. I've never been here before. Have you? Obviously not. Considering Din's been asking all these questions about the planet, I don't think Din's been here before. What is this? Join us! Come! Some Mass Effect planet. Everyone, special guests. Is that Jack Black? It is. Please. What the fuck? Why is Jack Black here? I was able to help rebuild Plasia 15. You were Imperial? Hmm. He was. Yeah, he's got the like tag thing. As nobility, is that stormtrooper armor? And what? <laughs> Grogu? What? <laughs> and the Mandalorian privateer warships docked in your fields? Oh, we protection. protection. No. I'd like to speak to these privateers. There's just one condition. What? You really must see the view. We have a problem. Yes. A droid problem. What kind of droid problem? Malfunction. Why droids? And then it got worse. Traffic accident, a heavy equipment failure. Sleep. Is that a hologram? It is a hologram. Assault. Why is Jack Black here? I can't get my mind off that. <laughs> like, what? It's Bowser, dude. The Mandalorian garrison outside your city walls can make quick work of your battle droids. That's... You allowed us to be armed? Yeah. Exactly. Weaponry and armor are intrinsic to your culture, are they not? You want us to eliminate your droid problem? I gave. I <laughs> Why is she rubbing his head? What do you think? You had me at battle droids. The community becomes a file of captured Imperial. Is that. That's Christopher Lloyd, dude. Why, why is he here? <laughs> I mean, he's just venting. He's pissed off. Turn them off. Did that droid just kill everyone? The citizens are no longer required to work. If we shut down the droids, our citizens would know how to survive. Give us the list. Well, for that, you'll have to go to the lower level and speak to the Ugnaughts. 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 See what happens when you rely on droids. Are you taking this personally? Yeah, he still hates droids, I guess. Oh, God. I am Bo-Katan Kreese. B2. I am Mandalorian Din Djarin. Friend of Ugnat Quill. Quill. Rest in peace. I have spoken. I have spoken. Thank you for your hospitality and for sharing your table with us. There are no such droids. These halls are the central nervous system of the city. Who's that voice? This is not the case. I have spoken. We would appreciate your help. Here are the locations of the droids you seek. There's a particular way to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. Accusing the work of malfunctioning is an insult. Well, it's the only lead we've got, so we might as well have a look around. He was a voice of that Ogna. That's a little dock area. You know there's gonna be a fight here. Huh? I haven't seen battle droids since the Clone Wars. I have. Any of them look suspicious? All of them. They all look suspicious. No. Show me your identification, please. Two. We're here on behalf of the Duchess. What's he doing? B2 battle droids are what uh, killed Din's family, right? Their base function was warfare. I thought they were just checked out. They mm. were. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> I love how they're bringing Matthew Wood back to play the droids. Excuse me, sir. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> that noise. <laughs> it was like a dodgeball. I'm surprised his head didn't get knocked off.
Not sure. I'd... Also, since, since when could a B2 battle droid run? Don't get bonked again. Oh. What's it say? The resistor. Huh? Sounds like a droid bar. And there's an address. Convenient. Wait, droids have a bar? I just realized like what they just said. <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> what? Hey, hey. What's up? That spark pad was found on a rogue battle droid. If you don't start answering questions, <laughs> I'll yank your memory circuit and dissect it back at the lab. Obviously Nobody a leaves. protocol droid's gonna Oh A word. You're wasting your time. You can't reason with droids. You want me to pull your hearing sensors too? We are aware that if these horrible <laughs> He still hates droids. We will be. Thought there was a bit of development there. We don't want to be replaced. We still have a lot to contribute. It's the least we can do. What? What is up with that droid? Panthe reprograms the droids that drink here? It seems the malfunctioning droids all imbibed from the same batch of Nepenthe. Well, there's your answer. Wait, there's a morgue for droids? Let me isolate them. Who's responsible? What are the chances that they're still active? Whoa. Well, I, I'd say the chances are pretty high. They're still active. That dead the droids then. Holy fuck. <laughs> it's writing. Huh? Rotate the perspective. They were originally manufactured by the Techno Union. The chain title says it didn't arrive on Plazir through droid acquisitions. Is that unusual? It's illegal. Oh. Is there a name? Yes, there will be. Head of security. Christopher Lloyd? Well, now that makes sense why he wouldn't use a failsafe. You programmed them to disrupt an attack. Everyone freeze! I didn't give up to the corrupt republic. I didn't give up to the empire. You're a separatist. Separatist uh. is a pejorative term. Count Dooku was a visionary. He was cut short in his prime by the Jedi forces. Oh, I wanted him to go off on his monologue. God damn it. He was cut down in his prime. <laughs> What's Grogu been doing? What? That's cheating. We found the cause of your malfunctions. Is this true? Despicable. If that isn't the quarter calling the stiffling slimy. You served my family well. But Captain Bombardier is the love of my life. Is there no room for a little bit of forgiveness in a galaxy so vast? Because I thought she was going to say a galaxy so far away. As for now, you must live in exile on the moon of Paraguay. I grant you audience with our deployment of Mandalorian privateers. Oh, not that droid. They got flashbacks of it from Book of Boba Fett. That is an actual key. Knighted? For what? He didn't do anything. You, you cheated. Knight until our paths meet again. My lord, my lady, then what's your play? I'll know when I get there. You need the dark saber. Probably. Well, they've all got the same exact shit. <laughs> I've come to reclaim my fleet. There's no longer your fleet. Does she have to challenge it? Then I challenge you. Yeah. Answers my question immediately. Do you accept my challenge? I mean, he has to. <laughs> Drop kick. I don't think she'll kill him though. Yeah, she won't kill him. Oh! She won't kill him. She needs every Mandalorian she can get. Mandalorians are stronger together. A misguided zealot possesses the blade who has not one drop of Mandalorian blood in his veins. Yeah, but that's how Mandalorians work. There's foundlings. What? Like, none of you are actual real Mandalorians either. Then she shall have it. What? He's gonna give her the Darksaber? What the fuck was the point of melting the staff then? <laughs> I guess you kind of earned it because you defeated the droid. It's not a gift. 
While exploring Mandalore, I was captured, and this blade was taken from me. Well, I guess that did turn out to be the outcome. Would this blade then not belong to her? It would. The music. <laughs> I return this blade to its rightful owner. Well, oh, Mandalore's getting cursed again. <laughs> There's a reason they're teasing Moff Gideon coming back. I guarantee he's going to bomb the fuck out of Mandalore. If he hasn't already, because all them tie interceptors and shit are on that system. The poor fucking staff, dude. He melted down the staff because he had the Darksaber. God damn it. Now what does Din have to defend himself? Not the staff, the fucking spear. <laughs> Yeah, that was probably the weirdest episode of Mandalorian we've ever gotten. But it was fun, I guess, for what it was. The episode kind of reminded me of Clone Wars in a way, but I don't think it fits for episode 6. Maybe episode 2 or 3, something like that, but definitely not episode 6. Like, like we have 3 episodes left in the season and we have an episode like this. Like, come on. It's interesting that the night owls pop back up after I was literally talking about it last episode. Could they be who saved Moff Gideon? And then they show up? Is that a coincidence? Probably. But still, I mean, it could be a decent theory. So I was kind of right with Bo-Katan winning the Darksaber, right? It just sucks it's through a technicality and not actually, like, fighting Din. Because then she actually deserves it. But the fact that she's earned it through a technicality. That could be bad. Because last time she didn't earn it. At all. Right? I think Sabine just give it to her. It's been a while since I've watched Rebels. But I think that's what happened. Right? I find it kind of weird that they're sidelining Din. They're basically doing what they did to Boba Fett. In The Mandalorian. You know what I mean? But it might just be because. You know Pedro wasn't available. And he was filming The Last of Us, right? So they're making Bo-Katan take the reins for this season, which I think is fine. Redeem her character, do what you need to do with her character, and then give Din back the Darksaber and some other stuff, you know? But I do think the way they're building up Bo-Katan, it might not go the way we think. Because Moff Gideon's still out there, right? Why is TIE Interceptors and TIE Bombers around the Mandalore system? Like, we haven't gone back to that. Like, what if Mandalore's been destroyed? What if the Empire are on Mandalore by now? Or Moff Gideon is? The finale is probably going to come to, like, a head. Like, we're going to have a shit ton of Mandalorians on Mandalore. And then they're going to free the Mythosaur. And then, boom. Devastation. Right? Or it'll be next episode. It might not be the finale, but maybe next episode. Like, we free the Mythosaur. Then shit hits the fan. Bo-Katan is killed. Din has to take the Darksaber, he gets on the Mythosaur, and there you go, right? Why do I think Bo-Katan's gonna die? I mean, it's a cliche story, right? Like, a character redeems themselves, and then to redeem themselves completely, they die. Or sacrifice themselves in some kind of fashion. Maybe for Grogu. I don't know, I just don't see where they could go with Bo-Katan's character other than Vol Mandalore, but she's already been given that opportunity once before, and she failed. So... I don't see the point. And also, going back to Mandalore when the planet is fucked, like, there's nothing left of it. Sure, they could rebuild, but considering the Empire is around that system, maybe it's not worth it. <laughs> I'm not really a fan of the celebrity cameos. It's kind of weird. You know what I mean? It just felt so out of place and didn't feel like Star Wars. It felt more like Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> I like the uh, Star Wars actor cameos. So, for instance, like, you know... Ahmed Best showing up as Keller and Beck. Matt Lanter in season one of Mandalorian, playing that one rebel guy, right? I like cameos like that, where it's Star Wars actors coming back to play a different role. I like shit like that. It's cool. But yeah, I mean, Christopher Lloyd's character, the Commissioner, he was a separatist, and he brought up Count Dooku, how he was struck down in his prime. No, Count Dooku was old, and he got struck down by a worse... Sith Lord, technically, because Vader became a menace. I do think this season of Mandalorian is the weakest that we've had so far, because the season seems to be all over the place. That could be because Pedro isn't as involved in this season as, like, season one and two, because obviously he was filming The Last of Us, like I said, or 
the Book of Boba Fett is responsible. And the reason I say that is because, obviously, in Book of Boba Fett, you had the Mandalorian episodes, right? You had Grogu and Din reunite in the Book of Boba Fett, making the Season 2 ending a bit pointless for the Mandalorian, right? And then when we start Season 3, it feels like the writers didn't know what they wanted to do for Season 3, because their initial plan for Season 3 is what we got in Book of Boba Fett, with Din finding his purpose, trying to find out what he needs to do without Grogu. You know, go, does he go back to his bounty hunting? Does he go to Mandalore? What does he do? And I think that was the whole point of Season 3, but because of the stuff with Book of Boba Fett, and I assume some behind-the-scenes issues, like they didn't have an actual good vision with Book of Boba Fett, so the Mandalorian team had to come in, pick up the scraps, and repair that season, which honestly seems kind of true, considering how Book of Boba Fett went. Their initial plans for Season 3 was the stuff from Book of Boba Fett. Obviously, the stuff that was put into Book of Boba Fett can't be used for Season 3 anymore, so now the virus had to completely change up what Season 3 was supposed to be, because there had to be some kind of massive rewrite. It makes sense, like, if you think about it. Because there's no way their plan was supposed to be Din and Grogu reunite in Book of Boba Fett. There is no way that was always the plan. It was supposed to happen in Season 3. Probably at the end of Season 3. And the fact that they're bringing back Moff Gideon, also, is kind of like, well, what the fuck is the point? You know what I mean? Like, we should have just killed him at the end of Season 2. But instead, it's like, we're going to free Moff Gideon off screen. He's going to come back at the end of the season, basically making Season 2's ending redundant. Like... Even more so than it already is, because Grogu is reunited with Mando anyway. It's just annoying that we're six episodes into this season, and we still don't really have a sense of direction other than just get Mandalorians and go to Mandalore to free the Mythosaur. Like, that's the whole point of this season. Really? It's kind of lackluster. Like, at least season one didn't really have a direction, but season one worked, because every episode felt like an adventure. Like, I really like season one when you look at it compared to this season. It just seems like they don't know what they're doing anymore. And it's probably because of Book of Boba Fett. And it's not to say that this episode was bad or anything. It wasn't the best episode I've ever seen of Mandalorian. But it's also not the worst. I don't even know what the worst Mandalorian episode would be. I mean, all of them have been pretty good, even like some of the weaker episodes. Like, we're on episode six. You know, we've got two more episodes left for this season. And this is what we're doing. I don't know how to feel about, like, Din... Like, not really liking droids that much, still. With how, uh, you know, the IG-11 stuff went. But, speaking of IG-11, what's going on with that? <laughs> I just realised, they didn't do anything with that, did they? Because we got introduced to R5. So it makes you think, what the fuck was the point of episode one? The setup for the pirates, I guess? This season's a mess. What the fuck? <laughs> also, this episode was directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. She's done a good job directing episodes, though. Even though this episode wasn't my favourite, it was still, like, well-directed. You know, there were some nice shots in her. Has she directed any of the finales? I'd love to see a director finale. Like, something that like, has a lot more story significance. But yeah, overall, a fun episode. I do think it could have been a lot better, especially for episode six, you know what I mean? But, hopefully... Episode 7 and 8 are amazing, and it wraps up this season in a decent way. Because so far, this season has been a bit rocky. There's been some good episodes, there's been some meh episodes. Also, this episode was like one of the longest ones, too. It's just weird that it had like one of the longest previouslys I've ever seen in this show. Usually, the previouslys are like 30 seconds, but this one had like nearly a two minute previously. <laughs> It was also kind of weird seeing Christopher Lloyd and Jack Black in this episode. I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, but I find it funny that this episode came out the same day as the Super Mario Bros. movie, which Jack Black plays Bowser in. <laughs> so he's having a good week, I guess. But yeah, I mean, that about sums it all up. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Ta-ta! And fair.